Star Pattern Scene 1. It's about a half past noon, August 1st, 1966. In the darkness, the first half of the Westminster chime from the University of Texas at Austin Bell Tower is heard. As it fades, the sound of rifle shots is heard. Lights come up on the proscenium. Dennis Fitzgerald, 21, appears pacing behind the trunk of an oak tree on the side of the South Mall. Dennis wears a short sleeve shirt, possibly plaid, with dark slacks and a pair of hush puppies. He carries a large messenger bag. He's peering around the tree out toward the audience. Rita Star Pattern, 20, enters hurriedly from upstage. At this point in her life, she is still Rita Jones. Rita has a beautiful head of long and unruly red hair. She wears a homemade beige cotton A-line dress with a decorative star pattern quilt square conspicuously appliqued across the bodice. She carries a purse. She's crossing the stage briskly when Dennis turns and sees her. Dennis is in an extreme state of agitation from the traumatic events he's witnessing. Suddenly seeing Rita, he shouts, Rita! Rita! Rita Jones! Rita! Hey, Dennis. I can't talk now. No, no, no! Stop! Stop! What? Where are you going? To the art building. I'm late for class. It's already half over. No, no, wait, Rita! I'm sorry, Dennis. I, I can't talk now. I just heard the second bell. No, no, you can't go! He grabs her arm. Stop! There's a sniper! A what? There's a sniper in the tower! What are you talking about? Tentatively, she pulls her arm out of his grip. There's a sniper up there on the observation deck of the tower, and he's shooting people. Gunshot. Listen. Gunshot. What? Dennis, I'm sorry, but you are not making any sense. Are, are you talking about some kind of anti-war thing, like street theater? Is this, is this a war guy? No, no, it's real. This guy is really shooting people. Look. You can see them, the, the people he shot. I can't really see that far with these glasses. They're mostly just what I use for reading. Over there, right in front of the tower on the South Mall. Are you sure they aren't actors? Because I remember last year, Students for a Democratic Society did that anti-war thing with a fake casket, like a mock funeral. I I bet that's Suddenly, she steps out and looks up, attempting to see the shooter. Dennis grabs her and wrenches her back. Rita falls. What the hell are you doing? I was just trying to see the sniper. If you can see him, then he can see you! Where's Jeff? What? Your husband. Where is he? He's at home. He's making flyers for the draft protest. What about Judy? Where's she? She doesn't have class today until four. Thank God. Sound of a rifle. Does anybody know who he is? A, a Vietnam veteran? A, a soldier? I don't know. But whoever he is, he's got a damn good eye. He's killing people with one shot from 27 floors up. A volley of rifle shots. Well, that sounds like more than one. Yeah. Some of the students went home and got their deer rifles. Gotta love Texas. But it's not going to help. He's hiding behind the parapet now and shooting down through the rain spouts. They're gonna have to go up there if they want to stop him. Now, how long has he been shooting people? Since noon. Oh my God, half an hour. I was going to try and get on the phones at the newspaper office, but the journalism building is in his line of fire. And he already shut out the windows of the econ building. Wait! Excited, he opens his bag and pulls out a portable audio cassette recorder. He flips it open and checks the cassette, turning it over. What are you doing? I just remembered. I had this cassette recorder in my bag. So far, nobody knows anything. But I can start getting interviews with a survivor if they can figure out how to get them off the mall. Survivors? Kneeling on the ground, he starts to pull the cassette tapes out of the bag, checking to see which ones are blank and which ones are, are used. Yeah, some of the people he shot are still alive. Well, why don't they call an ambulance? He's still searching for extra tapes in the bag. 
Oh, the ambulances are here. They've been here and they've brought in hearses too. any vehicle that can transport bodies, but nobody can get to the victims. Everybody's pinned down. He's shooting anything that moves. So they're just leaving people lying there. Well, what else can they do? Oh my God. You see those people that are right underneath the tower? It's a couple. He's dead, but if you look, you can see that she is still alive. She looks pregnant. Yeah, way pregnant. But she's lying on the pavement. It must be over a hundred degrees. Mm-hmm. But she's moving. She's moving. He's going to shoot her again. Someone has to tell her not to move. Stop moving. Don't move. Don't move. She can't hear me. It's too far. Suddenly, Rita takes off running in the direction of the tower. Wait. Rita, no. Rita. Blackout. End of scene. Scene two, it's now a quarter to one and the first three quarters of the Westminster chimes are heard. Lights come up on the pavement of the South Mall in front of the tower. There are two people lying down center, Claire Wilson and her boyfriend, Tom Ekman. Tom, 18, shot in the back of the neck while kneeling over Claire, still has his arms draped across the front of her body. Claire, 18, is beginning her eighth month of pregnancy. She wears a new maternity dress. It's a cotton shift with a flowery ribbon around the yoke. She's attempting to move Tom's arms off her body, but unable to sit up, she can only lift her head a little bit, not enough leverage to move his body. Rita, still carrying her purse, enters running. She kneels over Claire. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Go away. He's going to shoot you. Go away. I'm here to help. Lie down. Lie down quick so we both don't get shot. I'm Rita. Claire Wilson. Claire tries to move Tom's arms again. No, nope, don't move. Act like you're dead. No, I need to get his, his arms off me. They're so heavy. No, stop. Leave them there. No! She is really struggling to lift them as she lies flat on her back. Suddenly, Rita sits up and pulls Tom's body off of Claire. Thank you. Are you in pain? No. No pain. It's something else. Something giant. Giant. Like being electrocuted? I thought I stepped on an electric wire or something. You know, where they're doing construction. I thought I was electrocuted. And then, after that, I thought it was a ray gun. A ray gun? An invasion from outer space. I thought we were being invaded. Invited. Because I was melting. Melting, solving right into the ground. I thought, what else could it be? You've been shot by a sniper. He's up in the tower. I know that now. I heard the students talking. One of them said, we gotta get the pregnant woman out. But then another one said, no. We gotta get the ones there's hope for. Well, that just makes me mad. Like he's a doctor. But there's no pain. It's very calm, very peaceful. And just dissolving. Maybe what you're feeling is loss of blood. There's a lot of blood. Oh, no. That's all Tom's blood. I was only shot in the arm. It looks like it's coming from your back. No. My arm. I was shot in the arm. But it's pulling underneath your left hip. That's Tom's blood. He was kneeling over me when he was shot. It's Tom's blood. 
we could try to put a tourniquet on your arm. I could use the blue ribbon from your dress, but honestly, Claire, I don't see where- It stopped. My arm stopped bleeding. I know where I was shot, it was my arm. Okay. I have type A blood in case anyone asks. Okay. Type A, do you know your RH status? It doesn't matter. Uh, but if you're RH negative and the baby is positive. The baby is dead. Are you sure? I felt it shift up to the side after, after I fell and it hasn't moved since. But tell them I'm type A. I will. Type A. Tom is dead too. He died as soon as he died. He died before he fell. Was he your husband? I don't believe in marriage. Neither does Tom. We don't believe you need a contract to be in love. Well, I think you're right. Do you have a boyfriend? No, actually, I have a husband. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a divorce. Why? I don't want to be married. I, I probably shouldn't have gotten married. See, that's the thing. I know. And we can't just break up. We have to go to court. We have to pay a lot of money and uh, we have to talk to a judge and then I have to change my ma my name. Well, I don't have to, but I don't want his name anymore. Jones. <laughs> I don't want to be Jones. I want a name that says something about me that means something special. Your family name? No. I don't want to be Murphy either. Murphy or James. What kind of choice is that? My father's name or my husband's? Yeah. Actually, I think I might be a lesbian. I haven't told anybody yet, but I'm pretty sure that's what I am. Tom and I met just two months ago. He's not the father. I told him I didn't believe in love anymore. I told him love gets shot born. <laughs> shot it's born. Not. And then we went and fell in love on our first date. He told me he couldn't figure out if I was having a baby, if I was just chubby. He picked out this dress. It's pretty. I love it. It's really beautiful. Tom is really beautiful. I love his face. We talk about everything. He's told me about his whole life. We do everything together, we can't stay apart. He plays the banjo and he wants to be a poet. And we laugh all the time. The sort of things that are between me and Tom are so rare in this world that most people can't even understand the language. That must be wonderful. He was so excited about the baby. You know what? That was the last thing he said. He was talking about the baby. I started to fall and he turned around to see what was happening. He was reaching towards me and then he sh was shot. And he said something about the baby. I remember the word baby. That was the last thing he said. So, Claire? 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 What classes are you taking? What? What classes? What? Classes at UT. I was thinking about Tom. We're taking anthropology together. We just had a test this morning, which is why we got out of class so early. 
And then we walked over to the student union to get coffee. And then Tom saw someone he hadn't seen since junior high. Someone from Ohio. But that's where he's from. And then we all decided to go play some pool. But then Tom remembered the parking meter. We'd only put enough nickels in the meter to last through the exam. That's why we were crossing the mall. To put another nickel in the meter. And that's when it happens. Oh no. See, that's Tom. He was thinking about how if you get three pink slips, then they won't let you park your car anywhere on campus. And we'd already gotten two. Tom was worried because of how pregnant I am that I might not be able to walk to class if we had to park off campus. That's Tom. Always thinking about me and the baby. In fact, we were having an argument when it happened. He was telling me he didn't think I was eating well enough for the baby, and I said that just wasn't true. I just told him I had a glass of orange juice that morning. No. Claire, don't move. I have to. My leg is burning. No. Please. No, I have to. She moves her leg. The pavement is so hot. It's so hot. The entire Westminster chime is heard. That's the third time. It's been 45 minutes. You should lay on your back. It's not as hot. I can't. Are you shot? No, but I think I would be if I turned over. Why? This dress. It's so stupid. I hate this dress. My mother made it. I only put it on because everything else I have is in the laundry. But it's got this big old quilt square on the front. Right over my chest, it's like a target. I feel like I have a target stitched on my chest. Let me see. No. What if he sees? Just turn over a little. It's a star pattern. What is? The quilt square. It's a Lakota star pattern. For the morning star. How do you know that? Does your mother sew? My mother? She's a precinct chair for the Democratic Party. In my house, we measure time and election cycles. But my, my grandmother was a quilter. My father's mother. She tried to teach me. But the star pattern is very sacred. The Lakota used to paint the star on their buffalo robes. But then the buffalo were gone and the missionary wives started teaching them how to quilt. And they started sewing the star pattern. Now they give star quilts instead of the buffalo robes. It's a big honor. The only thing my mother told me about was that it was a bitch to sew. One wrong stitch and it won't weigh flat. Claire? Claire? I'm an art major. Claire, I'm, I'm taking art classes and I'm taking Portuguese and Spanish. Mm -hmm. I'm taking Portuguese and Spanish classes mm -hmm. so I can work with the farm workers. Farm workers? They make 40 cents an hour. Were you at the march? The march to the Capitol two weeks ago? Tom took me. I was too pregnant to walk. But we drove down to the Rio Grande Valley for the beginning of it. We wanted to show solidarity. Jeff and I were there. We marched with the farm workers the first two days. They're about halfway to Austin now. How do you know about it? Tom and I are in Students for a Democratic Society. So am I. Last summer I was in Mississippi with Nick. I was registering voters. That's so brave. 
Were you there when they shot James Meredith? No. No, that was up by Memphis. I was down in the Delta. Stayed until October. Missed my whole senior year. Your parents didn't mind. My parents. I want to know about my parents. Do you know about the Piccadilly protests? The sit-ins at the cafeteria in Dallas? Since summer I was 16, my mother drove me there every day. We wore our little pillbox hats and our little white gloves. So we would go and just sit there. Sit there for hours and not order a thing. Every single day for a month. You know something funny? I really thought I would be shot last summer. Shot on some backwoods road in the Delta. I thought about that every day. Look at that. The sky is so blue. Not a single cloud. It's the bluest thing I've ever seen. So blue. I can't take it anymore. Claire. No. No, Claire. Don't. Stay with me. Please. Claire. No. I can't. I'm done morning, sir. I'm done. Liar. Liar. Okay. Okay. Slowly, she begins to roll over, both hands covering the quilt square, half expecting to be shot. Yep. Yeah. It's blue. Yep. As blue as ever can be, just blue for days. Sound of a rifle. Making, yeah, no. a, making a radical decision. Very slowly and very deliberately, she removes her hands from her chest, uncovering the quilt square. Yep. <clears throat> really blue. Really blue. And underneath all that blue, there's the stars. Billions of them. We can't see them, but they can see us because... They don't have any night and day. Another rifle shot. Really blue, really, really blue. But those stars are there. And they can see you, Claire. And they can see your baby and your boyfriend. And they can see us. just behind all that blue. Off stage, speaking to his companions, we hear Artley Snuff, who's attempting a rescue. Go, 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 go! Claire? Claire, there's some guys coming to get you. Claire, you're gonna live. Blackout, end of scene. Scene three. Lights come up on a bed in a private room at Brackenridge Hospital in Austin. It's a morning in late September 1966. Claire lies in the bed. She has been through an ordeal and it shows, but she's healing. She's resting with her eyes closed. There's a soft knock on the door and then Rita enters. Hi. Oh, sorry. Wait, come back. Morning, sir. Yeah. Yeah, it's my Rita. Rita. I, 
came as soon as I, or they moved you, the whole time you were in intensive care, they wouldn't let anybody in to see you. I mean, anybody except your family. I know. Seven weeks. You look good. So do you. So guess what? What? I wasn't shot in the arm. Yeah, I figured. It was my hip, the back. They had to pick all these little pieces of bone out of my abdomen. That's what killed my baby, a piece of my hip. But I can walk. I don't think I can ever have another baby, but the doctor says maybe. That's good. How are you? Okay. Taking my art classes. But guess what? What? Remember how I told you I was going to change my name? I remember everything. Well, I figured out what name I want to have. Did you get divorced? No, not yet, but I will. Anyway, do you want to hear my name? Did you tell anyone you're a lesbian? Not yet, but I'm going to. I'm definitely going to. So what's the name? Well, I was thinking Rebecca Woodpecker. What do you think? I like it. It's like a, a tiny little poem. Every time someone says your name, just a, a tiny little poem. <laughs> Rita Star Pattern. What? I'm gonna be Rita Star Pattern. Wow. You know, like the star quilts. You could be Rita Morningstar. No, I'm, I'm gonna be Rita Star Pattern. There's a pattern. Instead of a family, I, I don't wanna just be out there by myself, you know, drifting out in space. I, my life has a pattern and it's made up of these pieces that may look random, um, but that's only if you don't know the pattern. And the pieces are all parts of who I am. I don't have anything to do with that, but it's my job to figure out how to fit them together into the pattern because my life has a pattern. I know it does. I just have to put it together. That's a lot of pressure. It's a challenge, but I like a challenge and I can already see how it's coming together. But me being married, that just messes with the whole thing. It won't lay flat. life flat. Read a star pattern. You saved my life. Hey, I brought you something. What is it? It's out in the hall. I'll get it. Rita exits and struggles back in with a huge painting wrapped in a bed sheet. It's four by four. I painted it for you. The canvas is composed of abstract shapes and intense blues with some green reminiscent of Georgia O'Keeffe's flower paintings. It is an amateurish but vibrant effort. Well, having positioned it, Rita steps to the side. Well, no, move back. Your red hair against those blues and greens. You like it? I love it. Really? Really? It's the inside of a flower. You know, like you're on the inside looking out. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Are you sure you like it? Because I can take it with me. I love it. Suddenly the distant sound of the full Westminster chime from the tower is heard. Well, I should go. I have class. Should I, should I just leave it here? Or? That's perfect. Rita gathers up the sheet. Well, see you. Okay. Read a star pattern. That's me. Rita exits, Claire closes her eyes again. Blackout, end of play. <laughs>